UFC 249 in the books, Timmy. You were watching. I was watching. A lot of people were. UFC President Dana White joining us on the line live here on Tim and Sid. And and Dana, we appreciate you jumping on. I'm going to make the assumption that considering the circumstances at play, uh, when your pet, when your head hit the pillow on Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, you had a smile on your face. Am I correct? Were you smiling when you went to bed yeah. early the next morning? I- I was really tired, but I was smiling, yes. <laughs> uh, first off, uh, congratulations on what was an unbelievable car. We were talking yesterday about all the names that jumped out uh, in front of a captivated o- audience. Obviously, Gaethje, uh, Francis Ngannou, Vincente Luque, Calvin Cater's a- elbow or elbows. Like, Who do you think has the ability to turn what was an unbelievable spotlight into something really big? Yeah, I, you know... We knew we had a really good card on paper. You know, you hope it translates well into, you know, into reality. Um, but one thing that I guarantee going into that fight, I said, I promise you, everybody who, who tunes in on, on Saturday, the main event will be ridiculous. And, uh, and it was. Uh, that was one that I just knew. As far as, the, you know, the, the way that these guys fight, the mentality of both fighters, I, I guaranteed that was going to be a good one. But, the whole card on paper looked really good. Dana, in terms of the main event, the card was great. But the yeah, main sure. event, was there a part of you going in because there were so many unknowns worried that the lack of a crowd wouldn't give the guys, the men and the women in the octagon, that kind of juice to have a kind of card like that? Were you worried at all about that as the week progressed? So I have two shows. I have a show called The Ultimate Fighter, and I have a show called Dana White's Contender Series. In those shows, the, the, the kids fight with no crowd, and it's awesome. I mean, they come, they come to fight. And, and when you're a fighter, I mean, they know there's millions of people watching around the world. So it's, it, it, it's not like, you know, these guys haven't done it before. Tony Ferguson has come off the Ultimate Fighter a, a lot like that before. What struck you the most? About, I mean, Sid and I were talking yesterday and we were saying how you could hear every shot land. You could hear guys breathing. You could, you could, I thought the interviews after, because no one was playing to a crowd, I thought Joe Rogan, who is a very good interviewer at the, at the worst of times, got the best out of them because there was nothing to play to. Did you, like, what was the biggest thing that stood out to you about the broadcast, or did you get to watch much of the broadcast? Yeah, yeah, no, I was, sitting right there i watched every fight from inside the arena and uh yeah it's 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 very again i i've been in those situations before where there's no crowd and i'm sitting there and you can hear every crack and punch but it was imperative for rogan to be there on saturday night with everything that was on the line everything that was going on i i needed the a team there and 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 it's him and it's daniel cormier too i needed both of those guys there on saturday they were you know they performed like the fighters did it was it was a flawless night it was perfect and i couldn't have written it any better dana white ufc president here on tim and sid dana considering daniel cormier could be heard completely by everyone in the <laughs> octagon did he get some Greg extra Hardy money did he get yeah. some of the purse of the winners <laughs> yeah. like how did that play out <laughs> yeah yeah he's probably gonna get a cut a coach's cut <laughs> that's hilarious yeah everybody's been talking about that does it piss you off that Conor McGregor hits Twitter throwing haymakers, or does that help you in the future selling fights? Uh, I, I don't. I don't know if it does either. It's it, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, Conor. Uh, you know, it's a big night. Every right. time there's a big night, Conor. Uh, you know, injects himself into the evening. <laughs> so Conor. Um just within the last couple of hours, throws out on social media, super excited for the lightweight title bout in July. Is he referring to Gaethje and Khabib? And is he in the queue after that? And is Gaethje and Khabib on Fight Island? And where is Fight Island, Dana? You're the only one that knows this stuff. Help us up in Canada. You know you have a ton of fans up here. Help us understand what the next move is on your end after these two fight nights this week. I actually talked to Khabib today. Khabib told me he'll be ready in September. So I know earlier today I had said this summer um, because he t- we, we were texting back and forth 
last night, and, and, and it sounded to me like he was ready to go. But uh, he, he says September. And obviously, I don't know what the world's going to look like in September, but I assume it's still going to be hard to get people in and out of the country. So I am, um, I, I am uh, definitely thinking that it's going to be on Fight Island. And I cannot give you the destination of Fight Island. No, Dana. Come on. Right oh, Just a couple Canucks and a New Englander. Some dude what, from like, where, or Massachusetts, uh, or Boston, what or wherever you want. Like what? What country? No is one it listens next to us. To? Give us that. Give us a little something. Where, it's not in the states. The we world? know that now. <laughs> it's on an island, boys. That's all you need to know. It's not a... All right. So it's in and out whenever I want to. <laughs> so it's not Catalina. It's international. We know that. <laughs> right. Right. <it's> not... <laughs> all right. All right. Um, what what fight are you really looking forward to the rest of the week in Jacksonville? Because for for the hardcores, they already know there are two more cards in Jacksonville this week. W- what are you most looking forward to? Yeah, I'm excited to see Walt Harris and see uh, how he looks. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really big fight for him coming off the tragedy that, that he and his family just went through. You know, the fact that this guy is even here this week and he's going to fight this weekend is already a win. Um, so, so I'm, I'm happy for him and happy for his family, for him, them to, uh, you know, for him to get back to, get back to work. Dana White, UFC president here. On I didn't follow up on Sid. Connor, by the way, Sid. Follow up on go Connor. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, oh that was a rookie I'll, move. Yeah, that was a rookie I'll, move by I'll, me. I'll follow up with Connor. All right. So and what Dana- Connor's going to do, yeah. um, I, you know, I, I, I don't know right now, you know, you know, you see him, he's out there talking, uh, but Connor and I, I know Connor wants to fight. But we haven't talked about a specific fight. Obviously, Gaethje and and, and uh, Khabib is going to happen. Um, you know, it looks like that's going to happen in September, and we'll figure out what's next for Connor. So, Connor will probably fight this summer, right? Then you have those guys fight in September, and then that will line up a fight for the winner. UFC President Dana White here on Tim and Sid. Um, judging also by one of Connor's tweets, Dana, it, it, it gave the impression he was hesitant about how the event would come off. Did you find you ran into fighters and in trying to book, especially Saturday, that were a little hesitant but saw how it played out and you were getting texts as it was going saying, do not book another one without me on it? Was that, was that taking place during the card Saturday? No. So what happened was the, the crew that fought on Saturday – was all about fighting. These, these guys were, were, obviously, you could tell, these guys were down to fight and ready and, you know, were, were all over us to get to book them first. So, um, and uh, they were the perfect crew for this first fight. They did everything that they were told to do. They, they, were, they were absolute joys to work with um, going through what, what my staff had to go through for uh, that last week. So we couldn't have had a better crew as far as, uh, you know, how they handled everything, ready, willing, and able to fight, ready and willing and able to go anywhere the fight was going to be, and then showed up and performed the way that they did. It could not have worked out better. Dana White joining us coast to coast to coast here on Tim and Sid. Do you think the Nevada Athletic Commission will let you fight in their state soon? I hope so, because, you know, I just built a $100 million facility there for me to put on fights built my own arena and uh, now this happens. So the timing is perfect for me to have done this unless they don't let me do it. That That's going to be, uh, it's going to be really bad if they don't, that's it's not good. I mean, Dana, I don't want to get into the, the socio political ramifications of every state, but I do. It wasn't that long ago where I did see the, the mayor of Vegas uh, go on CNN and seem pretty gung ho to try and, open up that city for obvious financial reasons. What's the feeling you're getting? I mean, you're closer to that state than us, obviously. What's the feeling you're getting? Are you, is it leaning more towards staying closed and potentially opening up? Yeah. Well, the governor and the mayor couldn't be more polar opposite. I mean, right. they're, right. they're, they're on completely different sides of the fence on that one. Um, and, and one of the big problems is, listen, if, if, if those, if the casinos aren't in Las Vegas, Vegas doesn't exist. It's a huge dust bowl. It doesn't, doesn't even exist. So, you know, we, they have to figure something out, you know, I'm not saying we should, uh, you know, compromise the safety 
of people just to get things open. But the real very good showing on uh, on TV that day. Um, I can promise you, she is a very smart woman, and and uh, you know, I, I don't know what the hell she was thinking when she went on CNN and wasn't really prepared for it. But um, there's a lot of smart people in Vegas, and uh, you know, and these are people who have families too, and, and and loved ones. Nobody wants to get sick or see loved ones, you know, sick or die from this thing. But we got some smart people that'll figure this thing out and figure out how to do it. That's what we need. We we eventually have to get you know, people together, like, like I did on Saturday, I said, I can do this. I can pull this off safely. And we did it. We figured it out and we did it. And that's, what's going to have to start out. Now we, now we got to figure out how do you get back to work safely? We get people back to work. And then how do you get kids back to school safely? Right. We can do it. We're we're all in the same boat. We're going to talk about the rest of the leagues in a flash. I, I I'm curious how many people called you after you were done from other leagues to see how you did it. Yeah, a lot. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we had a lot of calls from, you know, you know, all the calls. I had the people from other networks calling me. I had, um, I, had uh, I mean, celebrities, so many celebrities that called me after. I mean, it was crazy. I, literally every time I would hand my phone over after the fight and do an interview or something when it was over, they'd hand me my phone back and I'd have 130 messages. You know what I mean? It, it, it was crazy. And, and people have been reaching out and, uh, I, you know, I put together a 30 page document that I gave to the governor of Nevada and the governor of Florida on how we would do this and how we would pull it off. And, um, you know, I've been willing to share that with other people. So leagues have been calling, not just in the United States and other countries and, um, cities have been calling us asking if they could check out the document. So it's, it's been good. The, the, the feedback has been incredible. Dana White, UFC president here on Tim and Sid. UFC 249 is in the books from Saturday. Two more cards scheduled for Jacksonville this week. Uh, Dana, with with all due respect to Jacare Sousa and his two coaches, because obviously that story came out, um, is your feeling right now like you're doing a victory lap, or is it more subdued? Because there were a ton of people, I don't need to tell you, who didn't think this could happen. Oh, it was, it was brutal, guys. It was, I mean... I was Satan on Friday. You know what I mean? Now today that it's over, it's, it's all like, it's definitely a victory lap. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, with the whole Jocker Ray thing, you know, it just, it just proved that, that the system worked because what you don't want to do is have Jocker Ray fight and then find out two days later, he's got COVID-19, you know, uh, now we know he has it. Uh, you know, we can help him take care of him and, and, and his family. And, uh, and and he wasn't around anybody to infect anybody, so it worked out perfect. So there was video that, that emanated from the hotel where he wasn't social distancing with people, and you bumped hands with him. He had gloves on. Like, I know you said the system works. So were did you test yourself and all the fighters after the card, and were there no new positives? Now, I'll, 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 I'll have been tested four times by the time I go home on – actually – not even it'll be eight times because the COVID-19 test and the antibody test. Right. So, um, yeah, we're getting tested like crazy this week, not including Saturday, right? Last Saturday, just this week alone, we'll do over 1100 tests. Right. So you have no other, you have no other COVID-19 positive tests after Jacare. Nope. Yeah. Nope. None. What did that cost you? It's expensive. It's about a, it's about a all in. It's probably a hundred and thirty to one hundred and thirty five dollars to test. Right. And you said you got tested four times for COVID. We're talking the one I keep seeing on social media where they go into your brain and they walk around for a while. That's the one. <laughs> What's that? So you got tested four times specifically for COVID, not the antibodies for COVID. It's the swab test where they go basically into your brain. You got that four times. Both. Yeah, both. both. So in your nose with the swab and then the antibody test is they stab your finger and you drop your blood on this thing. It's almost like a pregnancy test. The best way to explain it. 
Dana White joining us here on Tim and Sid. One of the things that I love about having you on the show and you've come on, you've blessed us a bunch of different times, is that you're not afraid of t- tough questions. And some folks have accused you of having the monopoly and sometimes the monopoly being merciless. There are other places to fight if you want to fight, but yours at the highest of levels really seems to be the only one that exists right now. Did making your fighters sign a non-disparagement clause um, go tough with audiences outside of your realm? How did that go over with the fighters? No, all the documents that had to be signed um, to come in and fight, every, everybody was totally cool with it. Not just them, em- employees and, and um, uh, the media, but, but non-disparagement. The idiot mm-hmm. that brought this up, the guy is the guy is a, a creepy little weasel. The guy that brought this up, and here's the rea- and, and, and apparently he's supposed to be a lawyer. The non disparagement agreement is something like like if a, a fighter came out and said they never tested me for COVID nineteen, which would obviously be false and false and be disparaging us. He, he, he could come out and say, listen, I, I you know I thought Jacare got too close to people. I thought that this or that happened. You could still have an opinion on what you thought. And if you thought we didn't do it right, it's not saying that you can't say anything, it's saying you can't disparage us, which would mean something like saying, coming out and saying, they never tested me. That's what it means. So to be clear, it was just for non truths in your mind. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We, we don't ever stop our fighters from speaking their mind. I mean, how many times every, every day you see something in the paper where, you know, <laughs> This kid, Dana's this, Dana's that, you know, the UFC this, the UFC that. We don't ever stop that kind of stuff. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm one of the biggest people on earth who believes in free speech. You can say whatever you want. Just make sure it's true. Dana White, UFC president here on Tim and Sid. Timmy, anything else along those lines? Because I was going to take it to kind of a silly place, but it's it's, it's a solid no, the only question. The only one I had was, and I asked Ariel Hawani when he came on with us last week, so I might as well ask you because I got you. Knowing what the backlash could be, and you felt it on Friday, why were you so aggressive in pursuing putting this fight up? From California, from Tachi Palace in California to Jacksonville, why, why were you so aggressive in making sure this got done, knowing what you knew about what the backlash could be? Cause I don't care about the backlash. I knew we could do this. I knew we could do this. I don't listen. I look at the media as the weak. They are the weak. When you look at these people that are criticizing you, I look, I look them up online. Sometimes look at some of these guys. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. That's exactly what I would expect this guy to say. This guy's weak. He's, he's not built the way that I'm built. And I don't ever expect him to understand that. UFC president Dana White here on Tim and Sid. Um, Dana, the one the one thing I regretted Saturday was GSP couldn't have his moment. And I, Tim and I have covered him forever. And it was it was uh, the call that was released on social media that you made him was great. And he'll get his moment. I'm an optimist that he'll have his Hall of Fame moment. But just have you ever met a guy like GSP in your professional career? He's as unique as they come. I, I and and I agree with you. It absolutely sucked that we had to do it that way that night. But the problem was, you know, when is there going to be a crowd? When would we be able to really celebrate George St. Pierre? You know, it's either do it like that, that night, or don't do it, you know, until we get crowds back. And who, who knows when that would be? Yeah, it absolutely sucks. And, and, and that that's the way that one of the all-time greats had to be celebrated. And, and it bummed me out, too. And, yes, George St. Pierre is, is one of the nicest guys you will ever meet. Finally, Dana, um, Mike Tyson is scaring the hell out of me right now. <laughs> yeah. You, you, <laughs> right? you know 53. him. I know he's got the movie coming out. I know yeah. social media can be manipulated. But right here, let us. you know him as well as anyone. Could he get into an octagon at any point in his career? Could he get back into a boxing so ring at any point this. in his career? I love Mike Tyson. I love the guy. You know, he was one of my my guys that I looked up to growing up. I've always been a huge fan of his and all that stuff. And he and I have become very good friends. And I'm begging him not to go fight. I'm begging him. I said, you look awesome. You're still explosive. 
you're obviously still powerful. You know, you're one of the all-time greats, Mike. You're 53. Please, please don't do it. Please. <laughs> so, um, we'll see what happens. Do you think the um back meant that he wants to fight? <laughs> he absolutely wants to do something. I don't know what he's going to do, but he absolutely wants to do something. And if he's going to do something, <laughs> oops, sorry. <laughs> we're in a pandemic it's fine we're in a pandemic yeah. it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> oops um, you know there had to be one of those you, it's fine it happens it happens uh, so, uh, yeah anyway bottom line is I don't want Mike to fight and if it comes down to where he's about to do something crazy I might have to jump in and, 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 uh, and I don't know figure out something for him not to do it but Dana, I've heard you. I've heard you talk enough. Whenever I hear Dana, and correct me if I'm wrong, whenever I hear Dana White say, "quote We'll see what happens," end quote, you know something. That is Dana <laughs> speak. We've heard that before. Am I, yes. am I right? Am I right or am I wrong? You're good, you. You're good. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we could talk to you for hours, and it would be entertaining. We understand you're busy, so we'll let you go. And no, we always appreciate you talking with us. Uh, it's e- when it's easy and when it's hard. There aren't many guys that will do it. But you do it when it's easy and when it's hard, and we appreciate that. Thank you, man. I appreciate you guys. Great interview. You guys always have great questions, too. Love it. Appreciate care, it. Dana. Bye, guys. There is uh, Dana White not on the six-second delay <laughs> that uh, maybe we should have in the, uh, figured out uh, because of the past. Um, listen. Um, we're, on, we're on a couple seconds delay between each yeah, other. we're but. on a couple. So apologies to everyone who heard the word that slipped through live TV, live radio. Uh, these things happen. Actually, it doesn't happen a lot with him and I. Shockingly, uh, we've I been on there a lot. That should have been the one that I hit. <laughs> I think you have a you have some candidates on that board that you could have hit in that moment. I think you have. Yeah, I just, I just went here. I didn't know where else to go. Oh wait, oh that was you. I thought I heard that, and I didn't know where it came from. Forgive me, Tim. <laughs> well, yeah. That was, that was brilliant like... on your end. That was brilliant. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know what to hit because it had already <laughs> slipped out. But it's true. Like there are dudes that will come on here when things are good and they will talk and they will smile. And when things are tough and when they're not easy and they're hard, they just disappear. And Dana White, for, for whatever you think of Dana White, he has never been that guy with us. And he has never finished the interview and gone, oh, that was too tough and been, you know, short and upset and he answers the question the way he wants to answer the question and listen do i agree with like sometimes you need the media to check people and that's why that's why the media exists the way the media exists and i understand from someone who who maneuvers the way he maneuvers why he would think differently of the media but the media does have its position and i respect his opinion on what he believes the position of the media should or could be in relation to his world. But that's what we have with him is a conversation. We allow him to say his piece and he allows us to ask the questions and not everyone does that. No, not everyone. Tim, um, I also have the statistics of the interview, 22 minutes with Dana White, one curse. So those are solid numbers. That's actually, I will take that. That's pretty good considering that guy probably hasn't gotten a lot of sleep over the last four or five days. Tim, your question, though, and I know we got a break here in a second, but I, I feel like we need to just kind of chop this up a little bit. Um, your question about other leagues calling him even in the moment. There were, and we're going to talk German Bundesliga and what they're going to do this weekend a little later on here in the show. There are so many people who don't want to get in the water yet. There are so many commissioners and leagues and athletes who are just slowly making their way towards where they want to go, but their gut is telling them maybe not now. And, and there were, there were people split down the middle watching Dana try and pull this off. Now, again, Dana's clientele and Adam Silver and Gary Bettman and Roger Goodell, it ain't the same number. It's completely different. We all acknowledge that, but it wasn't nothing. Greg Hardy fought like it wasn't. And it went off and based on ESPN, 700,000 people bought the pay-per-view, which doesn't sound like a huge number, but remember ESPN Plus has this package you could have bought within the last year, so you might have had access anyway. So who knows what the real pay-per-view number was in North America? Who knows? 
but to, to see one guy do it is highly significant. And I, I know it seems like an obvious statement, but when you have some of the most powerful people in sport, which is what he insinuated, on the phone throughout the car to him saying, how'd you do this? How did you set that up? How many tests here? What was the spacing here? How are fighters getting to the arena? How many buses? How many vans? Like, he, w- he was making a path. Whatever you think of Dana White, he was making a path to, for some very powerful human beings to yeah. give them a little bit of a blueprint on what to do next. Was it perfect? And, no, but but I was expecting way worse of a weekend than played out then. Way and that was why I thought, and, and I don't know if he really answered it. Um, that's why I thought the, have you had any other positive tests? And he said no, but I also asked, I also asked if he tested every fighter after, and he gave us a number of tests that were done, but he didn't yeah. tell us that every fighter was tested after. Did he yeah, spin that was, on us? Uh, I didn't catch it a spin. You might be right. He gave us, uh, for those just tuning, us, tuning in to us, 1,100 tests, anywhere from $130 to $140 American per test is, is the number he gave us. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't technically say, you're right, everyone got tested. There was an assumption there, but he on didn't the way out. say that. No. Right. Yeah, on the way out. All right. On the 